So how long have you been doing this, uh, this whole photography gig? Um, I've always kind of had an interest in it. Um, but you know, it kind of started with me wanting to take photos with my phone and trying to do the best I possibly can. And then, um, once the lockdowns and everything started back last March, uh, I said, all right, you know what, I'm going to learn a new skill and decided to actually buy my first real legit camera. And it kind of blossomed from there a little bit. What kind of a camera did you get that you just finally saved up for and said, Hey, I, I got to get something real here instead of just shoot, you know, pointing and shooting with my phone. Yeah. Um, I actually back in March got um, this kind of beginner DSLR kit from Nikon. Um, and it was a Nikon D3500. It's a great starter camera for anybody who's looking for something kind of on the cheaper end to start with. And it taught me a lot about how to, um, um, while I was using it, I started out kind of shooting in the automatic mode and figuring that stuff out and was watching a lot of YouTube videos from other photographers and trying to learn as much as I possibly could and got to the point where I could start using the manual mode. Um, and it kind of all took off from there. And uh, actually just after Christmas, my wife helped me get um, upgrade the camera to an actual professional grade, legit non-starter camera. So I'm now moved over from Nikon to Sony and I'm working with a Sony a7R3, which is their, it's not their newest one in the resolution line or the R line. It's the last year's model, but we got a really good price on it. And I mean, it, it just blows that Nikon out of the water. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it, the difference in, in the quality of images and it's not that the Nikon took bad photos. It was just what I've noticed is that with a higher megapixel count and a larger full frame sensor, taking a larger image with more detail and it, it captures a lot more detail than the other camera did. So Interesting. So what type of uh, photographs did you start out with? Well, the first day after I got that Nikon, um, my wife and I went to her campus down in, uh, she, so she's going to school down in Fort Lauderdale. So I was down visiting her at the time. And then right around then, you know, I was able to work remotely. And so we went over to her campus and her campus is Nova Southeastern University, and she's there for her for her physician assistant program. So it's absolutely amazing school, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But on that campus, they have absolutely beautiful gardens with tropical plants, wonderful flowers, these amazing little, um, uh, I like just these different footpaths and all these little things all over the campus and surprisingly a lot of iguanas oh so, oh yeah yeah so we uh so I got some good shots there kind of learned from there and kind of messed around with we took a day trip down to the Everglades shortly after that and it kind of went that went for a while and then things kind of died off for a little bit just because I was working and with quarantine and this was at the height of the summer when everything was truly locked down. Um, couldn't really do that much. Uh, so around September timeframe, um, got really lucky. Things started to kind of open up a little bit again. And that's when the trip to Colorado happened. And that's, I think some of the photos you've seen. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That's spectacular. I mean, the the, op the photographic opportunities, not just from Florida with just the Everglades and all that, but going out West, okay. it's just breathtaking stuff. Mm -hmm. It really truthfully is. Yeah. And, and like just being out in Colorado kind of reinvigorated everything. And I took, so I went out, flew into Denver and got a hotel, 
was out there by myself, no one with me. I was, I was just purely there to explore and see and take as many photos as I could. And I, uh, like the first, first day after I, cause I, I landed at like 1130 at night <laughs> and then, yeah. And then the next day I got up and drove out to Pike's peak, drove all the way up, up to the top of it, got as many photos as I could. And, and several of those photos are what are actually on my website. And I took, I, I don't know what it was about that trip, but like it, I took a ton of photos that day at Pikes Peak, and just it was amazing. Just the the views you get from up on top of that mountain are tremendous. And then kind of came back, edited them, posted them on Facebook, did did all that stuff, shared them with my friends, you know. Um, then the next day, I got up and drove into. <laughs> Now, this day's a long day. Yeah, yeah. So I I drove from Denver into Wyoming. Mm. And I haven't, I didn't post any of the photos I took in Wyoming because I didn't really take that many. They're Because uh, I kind of just went up from Denver into Laramie. And, like, it's a cute little town. I just, and I took photos, but none of them were really, like, tremendous. Like, they weren't really... Like I just didn't spend enough time there to really justify, you know, sharing those. And I, I, I will be going back to Wyoming, yeah, without a doubt. But um, I drove from from there down towards back into Colorado and took this little route. When I say little, out west, little is kind of in perspective. Yeah, out west, it's yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I went down into uh, down south towards Grand Lake on the western side of Rocky Mountain National Park Mm. and I stopped at every little at almost every little uh, like service area on the side of the road snapped as many photos as I could um, continued driving and then got into the town of Grand Lake and when I was there had this amazing lunch, wonderful, absolutely gorgeous town nestled right at the base of the Rockies with this giant lake next to it. Absolutely beautiful. And I was waiting until the um, allowable time to go into Rocky Mountain National Park. So due to their, their COVID restrictions at the time, they were only allowing a certain amount of cars in per hour until 5 p.m. Once 5 p.m. hit, then you were free to go because I guess they had commuters that went through. But either way, you still had to pay the fee to get in. But it was absolutely worth it because when I was going through Rocky Mountain National Park, I was there at sunset. Oh, it's got to be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And spectacular. Oh, yeah. And I posted, like, if you've seen my Facebook page, they're the photos from that particular section of the trip are on there. Um, and I, I'm just still absolutely awed by how amazing Rocky Mountain National Park is. It's, it's seriously one of the most beautiful places on the, on this planet. Yeah. So how, how's the response been now? Where can we find your photos? If anybody's watching here on, on, on Facebook, uh, what's, do you have a URL or just what to search for? Um, if you just search for Chris Adkins photo on Facebook should come up. Um, and then there's also my website, uh, Chris Adkins uh, spelled A D K I N S. <laughs> um, I know saying my name too quickly. Cause sometimes it sounds like a T, but it's not, yeah. it's a D. <laughs> a D. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Very important to know that. Yeah, because there's probably others with similar names who are also photographers. <laughs> there are a few. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back into the Carolinas, mm-hmm. do you have a lot of photographic opportunities, uh, especially North Carolina? Oh, yeah. Um, this particular time of year right now, not necessarily as much unless I'm willing to drive a little bit. Um, but I've gone... Since I got this new camera, 
um, which I'm actually using as the webcam right now. So, um, but um, when I got this new camera, I went out the little the the town that my parents live in is in Davidson, North Carolina. It's this small, cute one street town that has lots of history in it. Um, gone out. I've I've gone out pretty much every single night with this camera. Um, so I've gotten fairly adept, surprisingly, at, at low light photography. Uh, it's not my favorite, but but you kind of have to you have to learn when the sun sets at like five. Um, oh, it's so true. It's really challenging. I'm sure. I, I mean, I can't even imagine how the people back in the old film days did it. Uh, oh, yeah. Just tried to. Oh my god, that had to be, and then you don't know until you get to that dark room. So mm-hmm. it's nice about digital. Oh yeah, at least, at least now I can sit there and kind of look at the back of my camera. And go, uh, all right, let me change the exposure a little bit <laughs> um, in the camera before I even get back to having to look at it. So that that that's wonderful. Like the the advancements in technology and photography have made have made things so much easier, and the editing process now instead of having to like meld two different film strips together in one uh, uh, chemical bath, if you will. At least now it's just, oh, I can look at it and move a bunch of sliders on my computer and next thing you know, it. oh, that's a great image. Did you get into the old stuff? Were you into film and doing the darkroom and all that? Uh, Darkroom, no. Um, I had, so the very first actual legit camera I ever had was one that my grandmother found in her house that her my grandfather had before he died um i can't remember what model it was can't remember anything about it i just remember i I don't have any of the pictures from it but i just remember that she gave it to me at one point when i was a kid I i was like maybe middle school age um and she Hey, she gave it to me thinking I'd have an interest. And and at the time, I, I kind of did. At the time, I was going through my little artsy phase, I guess. I don't know. I'm not much of an artist. I really <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. not. I, you don't have to be. I mean, seriously, if you know, you could have an eye and be pretty good technically, but still pull it off. It's just, it's practice, really. It's, mm-hmm. it's really just getting out there and keep doing it. You know how to frame things and seeing plenty of stuff online, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And, um, but like with with that old camera, like it, there was just this one picture that I took of a flower at, that I think, I think it was the Daniel Stowe Botanical Gardens. I went there with my mom and my grandmother one day. They were walking around. And I was just there to walk around and spend the day with them. Actually, I think they dragged me there. Um, but but I had that camera with me, and I, I took this one photo of a flower. And it was the first photo I'd ever taken where – it was absolutely perfect how the flower was perfectly in focus, everything else, like the, the bouquet behind it was absolutely gorgeous. Given I didn't know this at the time. I know it now looking back on it, but um, uh, all the out of focus elements were perfectly done. It was just one of those things. And, and I remember seeing that image thinking it was an absolutely great image at the time. And I kind of wish I still had that photo. I wish I could find it, but, never know where that could pop up yeah but that was an old film camera so it's legitimately gone so being in north carolina do you get out into the national parks in that area do you do any hiking are you you into that oh yeah i actually over this year over this past year the other thing that i got into is backpacking so uh i i've so i've spent some time in the great smoky mountains national park Hmm. I will be spending a lot more time once it warms up. I don't really have any winter gear for backpacking at the time, at this moment, but um, I will eventually. But uh, on a non-photography related note, I do intend over my life, the rest of my lifetime trying to section hike the entirety of the Appalachian Trail. Um, that's just something that I want to do it, it'll take years I may not even ever finish it but it's it's something that I would love to do yeah I'd love to do it too mm-hmm. I really would if I have the time it's about getting that time I could do it I'm I you know I, I, I'm into hiking and running and walking all that stuff but yeah that would be fun 
Mm -hmm. I'm sure, gosh, the photographic opportunities on the trail have got to be spectacular all along, even come down here to Georgia. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I know that I, I don't necessarily know that I would take this particular camera <laughs> while, while doing that, mostly because the thing's heavy. But um, I, I know that I will at least have my phone with me and whatever phone I buy will at least have the better or best of the cell phone cameras that are available going forward just so I, that way I have the ability to take a good shot if I need to and but you're right the, the Appalachian Trail is absolutely gorgeous there there's nothing about it on any part of it that I've seen that isn't beautiful yeah, yeah. so I haven't seen any of the part in Georgia or South Carolina yet. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be able to hike through that section. Actually, no, there is no South Carolina. It's just straight into North Carolina. Yeah. Um, but I will be hopefully starting that this summer. I don't know when, but um, there's a lot on the plate for this year. So that may get pushed to next year or whatever, but I'm, I'm hoping to start at least the whole Georgia section this year yeah i think that that part of the state and i love going up that way i just love i mean it's it's hilly enough around here in, in the atlanta metro but when you get up that way it's just in the waterfalls and the terrain are you more into like landscape photography do you like to do people photography as well a little bit of both i, I i'll do people i don't it's not my personal preference like i i started this with the kind of goal and intent of i all right so i love landscapes i absolutely love nature i love the outside i love the outdoors i love being outside i love love doing everything and don't get me wrong i've got indoor hobbies too but um but i i feel like a lot of americans unfortunately take the united states for granted and forget just how amazing this country is and the sheer beauty that is in and i'm sorry i feel like i'm getting kind of emotional now but um, yeah it is but but the sheer beauty within the united states is just something that i feel a lot of people forget because every time you talk to somebody you hear somebody say oh i want to i want to go see paris i want to go see france i want to go see Asia and I'm like those are great goals but I've always always for the entirety of my life I've always said I want to see the world sure but I want to see my backyard first yeah there's there's so much this is so expansive and the geographical uh differences Georgia itself and this is why we have such a movie industry mm -hmm. Is that you have the coastline, which is so much different from the Piedmont, so much different from the mountains, and we have the cities and then the rural areas. Everything you want is here. It's just as good as California, to be really honest. Oh yeah, good to be here too. It's a little less rocky, but it's, yeah. it's 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 absolute. You're absolutely right. I mean, just even the 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 variety in North Carolina is astronomical. Like, I mean, you go to like the outer banks you get this beautiful low country beach kind of atmosphere oh, wow. and then you go through a little bit of a kind of ugly flatlands portion and then you get to the piedmont and then it's just the rolling hills and the area around charlotte uh or just outside of charlotte where you get the rolling farmlands and stuff and as it gets more and more hilly towards the mountains and then you come to what i call the most beautiful place on the planet and that's all of appalachia and don't get me wrong the rockies are amazing but there's something about appalachia and maybe it's just because it's in my heart yeah. um but the appalachian mountains are yeah you can't you can't beat it you just can't yeah so you have you ever gone into the virginias Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I was actually born in Maryland. Spent a lot of time in Virginia. My dad's family's from West Virginia. Oh really? Where in West Virginia? Uh, so just outside of Huntington, on the western yeah. side of the state, near 
like right on the Ohio border? I went to school at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, not too far uh, from that area. Mm -hmm. And years later, I have a girlfriend now. She's uh, from Parkersburg. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, my dad went to of time. my dad went to Ohio University. Oh wow, small yeah. world, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It is. Um, sorry, is not was. Misspeak there. Hello. Um, <laughs> and then he actually ended up transferring to Marshall. Graduated from Marshall University. Um, I went to West Virginia University. Um, so I spent a lot of time in Morgantown. Um. I didn't actually graduate from there either. It's just really funny. My my family has this tendency to transfer colleges all the time. Um, <laughs> I, I I think it took me four total colleges to actually get my degree. Oh wow! What do you have your degree in? Uh, business administration and financial management. Um, so really, really boring. <laughs> so, what, what is your day job in in that field? Yeah, I, I work for Wells Fargo. I'm, oh. uh, I'm a uh, customer communications exit, uh, specifically the communications portion of Wells Fargo exits. Uh, essentially, without going into too much detail, because I don't really know what I can or can't totally say about it. Uh, yeah, I know. Being with the big corporations, like I, I work for a big corporation too. It's like, I just, like, I, I really don't, I, it's such strange bedfellows. It's like, I don't even want to just go there. If I do, I'm doing my own gig at night and it's like, I don't know. It, it's very strange. So, I mean, if you're, um, you know, obviously yeah. not comfortable. It, it, well, it's not that. It's like it, it, when a relationship with a customer needs to end, we're in that portion. That, oh, that's wow. as far as I'm going to, yeah. that's gonna be challenging so yeah doing the photography is a great escape mm -hmm. and it allows it gives me an excuse to travel i i do wish more restrictions would lift so i can get back to that part of it um but like the the whole tagline of my website is like adventure travel every day uh i only threw the everyday thing in there because most paid photography jobs are going to be local family portraits and photo shoots and stuff like that but also the other advantage to the everyday thing was like just street photography, just taking pictures of, of cities and the bustling life of a city. And I want everything to get back to normal. So that way I can take a photo of a busy street. The closest I can get to that now is our, our photos I posted earlier today of my recent trip to Miami. Um, I was down there earlier this week I actually came back yesterday back to North Carolina I was there visiting my wife and we drove down into South Beach and the first time we'd ever felt comfortable walking through there was because it was partially locked down and it wasn't as busy <laughs> as it normally is but and it also gave me a good challenge for trying to edit the photos because of the amount of busyness with the lights so sure. um, South Beach is it's beautiful in its own way. It's in a weird way. So, but. And it has changed a lot over the years too. It used to be kind of this uh, run down kind of play. A lot of places in Florida have been mm -hmm. like Panama city kind of came back and I, South beach has its own story too. Oh yeah. Yeah. What kind of uh, editing software are you using to enhance your photos? So I use Adobe Lightroom. Um, not really into the whole Photoshop thing. Uh, I, not because I don't like it, but just because I haven't taken the time to fully learn it and flesh it out yet. Um, Lightroom, I figured out cause I, it, Lightroom allows you to do kind of basic adjustments in the sense of like, I can do different adjustments with color saturation, contrast, um, bring out, uh, essentially details by adjusting color, light and dark and, and things like that, as opposed to Photoshop where, yeah, I could, if I wanted to, I could take a picture of, of, of you and put you on the moon or, or whatever. And, and like, that would be awesome, but I just haven't fully learned how to use that yet. And it, it's a tool that I do technically own as a part of my membership with the Adobe software suite. Um, but it's just a matter of taking the time to fully flesh it out. And I'm enjoying using Lightroom more now because of, well, 
most of what I try to take photos of are already beautiful. I don't want to mess it up. Right, right. I so I don't this color. Oh yeah, I, like so. I use um, so I take all my photos in in what they call the raw format, which it kind of subdues everything and takes uh, it it collects as much detail as possible. And the camera doesn't do any post processing within the camera. Like if you were to take a JPEG from the camera, um, a JPEG kind of does some post processing and it compresses the information. Whereas a an uncompressed raw photo. Uh, doesn't compress anything. It literally just pulls it exactly as it is, gets you as much detail, um, and you have the ability to tweak it, increase the the dynamic range, uh, pull darks out of areas, pull lights out of areas, change the white balance, do everything you can to it because it collects all the data that the sensor is capable of recording in that moment. And having the flexibility of being able to take a raw photo and then turn it into something gorgeous just because just by tweaking the color a little bit and i've always hated like fake photos like i cannot stand it when someone i understand why people do it but i cannot stand it when someone takes a photo of a model and then over smooths their skin and gets rid of every little blemish and it's yeah, it, it it doesn't look real. You look like a wax doll. Like I... it's so true. It really is, and I could tell. And even going from the days of just the old fashioned touch up, even through now, it's like you could so tell. It's just been so messed with, so inauthentic. So yeah, you definitely want to make keep things natural. Mm-hmm. Like I, I want to try and preserve the natural beauty. Like the most I'll ever do as far as retouching something is is. Like if I take a picture of, of a human subject and they've got a zit on their forehead, I might remove the zit, but that's about it. Like I'm not I'm not gonna like go through and, and get rid of every little wrinkle or every sure. little imperfection because there's a moment in time. Like the way I look at it, a zit's temporary. I don't mind getting rid yeah. of that. That's not something worth preserving. But <laughs> the, like the way you look right now, there's a right. level of beauty in that in its own way. So I don't, I don't want to ruin it. It's really like, true. <laughs> so how's the family been supporting you with this? Uh, obviously the wife is very busy doing schooling. So that's, does, does she, uh, does she get involved in any of your photography? Do you take any photos of her and does she like to pose? I have used her as a test subject to try and get better at portraiture so far I haven't post haven't t- managed to take a photo that she's willing to let me post as a <laughs> as an example yet, but uh hopefully that'll come um I'm sure yeah but I she's been absolutely amazing she's the most wonderful amazing woman I've ever known and yeah. I don't know what I would ever do without her um so I mean, she's really busy doing her own thing. She's going to, well, like I said, she's in her final year of PA school. She also runs a fairly successful Etsy shop on the side. Good. Um, she Very makes a lot of really cool stuff. <laughs> Excellent. But the funny thing is she's better at the product photos for her stuff than I am. So like, <laughs> that is funny. But um, no, she, I, I, she's the most awe-inspiring person I've ever known and she's been incredibly supportive of me pushing me to 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 do all this stuff and and what's also really funny is she was down before she started PA school in Florida she did a three-month contract at Emory in Atlanta and well you know it's in Atlanta (laughs) we we went to this little like outdoors store because I needed a jacket and we were walking through and she started looking at this little thing of coffee mugs and we've got this coffee mug that we bought for her but it also inspired me because it's a picture of the mountains with a trail and it says great things never came from comfort zones 
<laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. And it, like that has been a motto and an inspiration. And like, I am incredibly uncomfortable putting myself out there in the sense of, hey, these are my photos. Tell me what you think. And yeah. lo and behold, it's been an amazingly positive reception. And that's like, and I'm hoping that this turns into something bigger and grander and greater. Um, it'll obviously take time, but I, I would love it to several years down the road, let this be the only thing I have to do. Yeah. As long as you got the passion for it, just keep going for it. So that that's good. Do you uh, plan on trying to sell prints? Is, is that something that uh, you're trying to move forward? That is something that I would like to, to, to do. Um, I've got a few that I would, that I would consider listing as for sale on my website. Um, I just need to figure out the best way to make it financially feasible instead of, uh, cause it's a matter of, of getting to the point where I can print them myself versus going to say Shutterfly or Printique or, or one of the other kind. And don't get me wrong. They're, they're, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. I've, I've actually used Shutterfly for every print that I've made so far. Um, but if I'm going to sell them, I'd rather, you know, do the cost analysis based off of what the materials cost me in my printer time and my ink versus just factoring in them. Um, so I may try to start selling some of them soon and hopefully I will. Um, but for the most part, uh, that's something that is in the future plan progression. It's just not here yet. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, any other future plans on what you were, you're aiming to do? You staying in the Carolinas? Um, no, I, I have. So after the trip to Colorado, I had actually pulled all of my friends on Facebook, just did a random status update. Like, Hey, I went to Colorado, did this, where should I go next? Right. Um, and not everybody responded. Like I got maybe like 20 total responses, but what was funny is that I got a bunch of single responses and then one place, just one place got more than one answer <laughs> and it got four of them. And that was Maine. So my wow. next, my next big one will be up, up to Maine, but it's, I've done some research on when I'd like to go and it actually, like I say, that's the next big one because that's kind of what I told my friends I would do, but it's also not going to be the next trip I actually take. But that was all due to the fact that when I started researching the best time to go to Maine for photographic reasons, um, a lot of things came up with the fall. But there's a particular type of photo that I'm looking to capture while I'm there, and that's going to require me to go there next January. Oh, in January and Maine. Wow. That's, that's, uh, that's very rugged, I'm sure. <laughs> and challenging. I, I would imagine maybe going into Portland or somewhere like that. That's gotta I, be rough. Oh yeah. I, I want that photo of the Rocky cliff with the lighthouse with like seven feet of snow on it, with the ocean crashing into the cliff below it. That is that is the photo I want to capture while I'm there. And the only time I'm going to be able to do that is during the height of snow season. So, Ooh. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Reminds me of that movie, The Lighthouse, which is just the most gritty thing I've, I think I've ever seen. That's amazing. Well, wonderful. So your website is uh, all one word. It's Yeah, it's uh, just chrisadkinsphoto.com. chrisadkinsphoto.com. And uh, I could find you on Facebook. You're on Instagram, I would imagine, as well. Yes, my Instagram's not as well loved as the Facebook or the website. Um, I'm actually in the process of updating the gallery page on the website to actually kind of break it down by different styles, um, as opposed to just having that one page that has examples of everything. Um, it'll still be one page, but there'll be subsections for each different. Um, thing like like 
a different section for cityscapes, a different section for landscapes, a different section for street photography and, and things like that. Um, I'm hoping that'll, I'm hoping to be able to launch that version in the next week or so, uh, just because it'll take a little while to, to figure out the photos and actually get it coded right. Um, actually, who am I kidding? I don't code it. I use Squarespace. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, don't waste your time. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I tried to do computer coding and I lost interest in like two weeks. Um, but HTML like 25 years ago, mm. I, I got the hang of it, but I'm like, why am I doing all this work? Oh, yeah, like it, it, it takes what 14 lines of code to have one word display on screen. Like, yeah, not worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but I do regularly update the Facebook page. I actually did two posts today um that were the trip uh all the photos i took from the trip to miami um and those are i i think they turned out well i hope they did um so very good yeah well it's been great talking with you this evening i i this is the first non-musical or non-music related uh episode for me so i want to really branch out and just get a bunch of different types of artists on here so i really appreciate that and um just yeah just keep on keep on and uh keep keep taking the photos um that's what i say just keep expanding your horizons i think it's a great idea oh yeah i'm i'm definitely looking forward to see what else happens and i like I've got a couple little like weekend trips around the area to go. Um, um, there's one really cool one that I'm planning on doing for my grandmother um, that it'll wait till the spring, but essentially I'm going to sneak up into West Virginia to the town where she was born and raised in, I think she was, yeah, 1929. Nice. So there's this little, little town in the middle of West Virginia out there just, remote Appalachia and I'm going to go in there sneak in there she she won't even know that I'm there <laughs> just take a bunch of photos come back get them printed professionally set up and then present her essentially this frame of all the photos of where she grew up and and like the family cemetery and and everything that that it means a lot to her so I'm hoping to be able to do that in well spring so March April time frame probably it's a great idea that really is. It's been great having you this evening. And also, um, if you have any photos uh, that we discussed here tonight, you can email me those as okay. well if you yeah. want. Um, I don't know if you have my email address. Uh, if it's the same one from what we were communicating with before, I'll, I'd be happy to send them to that. Yeah, it's the Gmail one that I have. Um, yeah, this stuff, if, we, if you can remember what we were talking about, I'll lay them over. I do video editing. So, um, okay. Awesome. Do that. I appreciate your time and thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you. And thank you for having me.